Hi, thank you for joining today's webinar. Um, we're just going to wait a couple of minutes for others to arrive. Um, we will be talk we will have an introduction to Microsoft Teams and learn how to monetize Teams very shortly. Hi everyone, thank you for joining today's webinar. Um, so today we will be um, talking about introduction to Microsoft Teams and learn how to monetize Teams. So the agenda today will be as follows. Uh, we've got the wonderful Mr. Robert Crane who will be doing the introduction to Teams and the wonderful Rowan Mia from Switch Connect who will talk about monetize, monetize Teams um, and then Q&A right at the end. So I'll send that over to you, Robert. Great, thank you very much. I'll just make sure I can go to the uh, next slide here, let's hope. Down, no, click maybe, try clicking. Can you just advance the screen for me and I can kick it off? Sorry about that. Okay, so welcome everybody to our session. We'll be talking about Microsoft Teams. So. Hopefully by now you have um, had some hearings out there in the market around uh, Microsoft Teams. Obviously Microsoft is very keen to get the word out to you uh, that this product is out there, has been in market now for probably getting close to over two years now. So again, it is uh, becoming a very uh, important product in the Microsoft suite. Um, and again, what we're going to talk about here is we're going to let you know the fact that Microsoft Teams basically uh, comes with uh, SharePoint and what you get nowadays is Teams is available in every Office 365, Microsoft 365 suite. So it is a product that is basically rolled into all the suites that are available today. Now, one of the important things to appreciate with Teams is it's not necessarily a service uh, on its own. It really is an overarching um, I suppose, front end onto things like Exchange, SharePoint, and a number of other services. So again, think of it like a single pane of glass. Think of it like an aggregation of many of the services that customers are already using today, but provides a nice simplified interface over the top, uh, basically, of um, all the options that are there today. So that makes it easier for uh, your customers to be able to uh, go in and access these services. 
Now, importantly, in this world of mobile, we also get a dedicated app on all platforms. So we have a Teams app on Windows 10, iOS, Android, and so on. So the idea here is we get a consistent look and feel. We get a consistent app experience no matter what um, our platform, including uh, basically on the web. Now, an important thing to remember is inside the tenants that do have Teams enabled, uh, well, do have part Teams as part of their licensing, it is now typically by default enabled and turned on. Now, what this means is, is that Teams uh, can be created by any person inside the tenant. So by default, out of the box, and this can be changed, but beware that your users can go in and create Teams themselves. So the idea is, the opportunity is for IT resellers to step into uh, the fold here and basically take the lead and again, help the customer design and architect a solution rather than the uh, customer tripping over themselves and potentially doing things wrong or inappropriately or not thinking about it. So again, it's a good opportunity to readdress the file sprawl that we see typically on uh, file servers. Now to administer Teams, you basically go into the admin portal inside Microsoft 365 and then down on the left-hand side under Exchange, SharePoint and whatnot, you'll also find uh, the option in there to uh, administer Teams. So in there, you'll find the ability to set policies, to manage your callings, to also uh, basically allow things like guest access. So all of the admin, again, can be done directly from the portal, and it can also be done from the command line using something like PowerShell. Now, the, one of the most important things that we will talk about, and again, this is why we have Switch Connect with us, is that Teams is now able to be integrated directly with voice. So what that means is we can now go beyond just uh, basically computer to computer. We can now make direct calling connectivity to landlines as a replacement to traditional phone systems. So there's a huge opportunity here. And again, Teams is that centralized location in which you can start plugging services like voice integration into to get this sort of experience. Now, as I mentioned, the way to think about Teams is it's the central hub in Microsoft 365. This is where the services like Exchange, SharePoint, and so on are already in there for you. But you can extend this by adding in Power BI, Forms, uh, OneNote, all these sort of services that are part of uh, Microsoft 365 can be easily added into the Teams architecture. And really, this is the opportunity, again, for the reseller to step in and architect the solution for the customer and help them get the best output. Now, we need to step back and consider why Teams is important today. And the way I like to describe it is to think about three collaboration universes, the old, the new, and the modern. Now, in the old world, that's categorized typically by on-prem file servers, file saves, NASs, USB drives, and so on. Collaboration is done by people sending and attaching emails and, and, and attachments to each other. People uh, use a single standalone paper calendar, they write things down, and when they communicate, they try and do it on the phone, but typically end up leaving voicemail. And work is a place that people go to. They go and sit at a desk, they use a traditional desktop. Now, the challenge with that is, is that what happens is in today's modern world, in today's consumer world, the users are expecting things like um, social networking, they're expecting the ability to easily share files, to allow guests to, work with large files and so on quickly and easily. Now, if the IT department uh, is uh, hesitant or is in slow in evolving this for a, uh, an end user, what we find is, is the end user will then go out and use shadow IT. So there are plenty of consumer services out there that will allow people to do file sharing, that will allow them to do voice over the internet, to do email, to do social networking and so on. Now, the problem with that is we then end up with our private confidential uh, corporate information in consumer grade applications and in many cases management might not even be aware that these are actually in play so we don't want to do that so what we want to be able to do is provide an environment like office 365 that gives us things like a shared calendar contacts integrated email box uh, for example a place to put our personal files onedrive shared files in something like sharepoint and we get other cool tools like planner power bi um, things like yammer as well now, part of the challenge here still is, is that if a user wants to create, say, a project site to share some files quickly and easily with somebody outside the organization, that's still a challenge because they have to go to uh, someone in IT, ask for that provision, ask for that to be set up. If we get resistance these days, they fall back to shadow IT. 
So what happens today is that Microsoft has created a service called Teams. And when you create a team, you get a mailbox, a calendar, a SharePoint site, you get a place to do chats, you get a planner, you get Power BI and so on. Now, the idea with this is it's all about enabling users to get the job done with the tools out of the box rather than them having to be uh, wait for them to be provisioned. Because again, even if you don't need a mailbox or a SharePoint site immediately, chances are down the track that you will. So the way that Teams approaches this is to provision this automatically for a user and allow a user to create this. Now, what that means is that control of these IT assets shift from being very much the IT admin who had to set up permissions, had to set up folders, uh, managed all of that manually and, and was basically the single point of contact to the point now where the user set these up. Like I said, out of the box, if you want to create a team, any user can do that. So again, that's great for users, but it can create challenges around control. But it's important to remember that generally going forward, that the control of these resources is moving to a more user-centric environment. Now, the data moves from being something that's very structured, typically in file shares, in directory structures, folders, and so on, to being an environment where it's very ad hoc. So what I mean by that is, is that instead of creating very deep structures, best practice these days is to create very wide and flat structures. So again, if you need to put files into a new location for some reason, you don't create a subfolder below some other subfolder in some share, you go and create a new team and put them inside that team. Now, again, for people who are very used to a linear structure, that can be, again, a challenge, but the big technology that allows us to get access to this data is search. So remember that everything that we put into Office 365 inside a team is searchable. So we can get our hands on it quickly. And that's how users expect to be able to find information today. They go to a search engine to find stuff on the internet. They search through their emails to find that reply from somebody. So again, ad hoc is not bad. It's just a different way that structure is approached. Now, the advantage is, is we want to encourage users to put their information inside a compliance boundary like Office 365, where we can manage it with data loss prevention, information rights, and so on, without getting in the way of the user's day-to-day -day work. Now, that means that access moves from, as I said, a very linear approach. Most people who are traditional in their approach to information work in a very linear way. They go to their inbox and they cycle through their inbox from top to bottom, and then they go back to the top and they work through it again. Same with files and folders. They like a very linear structured environment. But the reality is we've moved to an environment where things are happening in parallel. You may be a member of the admin team. You may, may be a member of the finance team. So you need to work across all these sets of information at the same time, rather than just dealing with things in a linear approach. So what is Teams? Well, in essence, as we spoke about, Teams is a combination of things like Exchange, Microsoft Stream for Video, OneNote, SharePoint. Uh, all of that is built into Teams. We also get things like Group Chat, we get audio stream, we get the ability to access our documents, and we also get the ability to have meetings and so on. We get the ability to integrate with Microsoft, plan Microsoft tools like Planner, but also equivalent third-party tools like Trello as well. So again, it's becoming this centralized hub for all the information that users need to work with in their environments today. So as mentioned, it does your calls, it does your meetings, it does uh, what's on today. You've got a calendar integration there. It will integrate with Office 365 apps like Forms. That's another great thing you can put into your Teams. You can extend it. So again, you can extend the uh, navigation. You can have as many Teams as you want. Again, it gives people the ability to create channels, again, to customise and to organise their information. And importantly, it's built on the standard enterprise and security that is part of Office 365. Now, the idea here is that we don't want to have to drop out and go to a separate tool when we want to escalate a communication from an email to a document, to a conversation with somebody, to a, uh, again, a face-to-face -face meeting with that. Also think about the reality that more, more people are working outside the office. You're having more demand for uh, things like uh, WeWork and that, where people are working remotely, working from home, working on the road wanting to share video. But there is no question that, again, video is a big driver moving forward and making that easy for users to do personally, but also inside environments with meeting rooms and that sort of uh, thing is very, very important today, again, to reduce the friction because the user's expectation is, is that I can do this with third-party tools, so they need to be provided for me. 
as part of the company that I work with. So again, setting all this up, making all this happen, doing all the integration, setting up teams, uh, setting up rooms is something that an IT provider can really get their teeth into and specialise in to really give the customer a good experience when it comes to modern collaboration. So more than just sharing files via attachments. Now, again, one of the big things here, one of the big sellers for Teams is we can start reducing our dependency on things like email, you know, bouncing emails backwards and forwards. If we work out loud, if we work in public, the advantage is, is that it all becomes searchable. So people can see solutions, people can see suggestions, collaboration happens more naturally because the barriers are down. We don't silo information inside things like emails. And if somebody comes into the conversation, they can pick up from that point very quickly rather than having to try and trawl through a very long uh, group email. And importantly, like I said, things like the integration of OneNote. OneNote is a fantastic tool that will save customers huge amounts of time that, again, a lot of people aren't aware of. It can, again, be used as an individual, but it can also be used as a group. Imagine doing a project or a maybe an employee manual in OneNote and then sticking that up into Teams so it's available to everybody. Importantly, all of this, again, is built in and is incorporated into a single, to a single tool now, which is Microsoft Teams. Now, as mentioned, Microsoft Teams doesn't stop just at the Microsoft ecosystem. It can integrate via apps to third-party applications like Trello, as you see there, GitHub, Azure, um, all sorts of things are available to you to save time and effort. Now, one of the things I'd encourage you to explore in Teams is the concept of bots. So bots are an automated uh, application that can perform a number of tasks. So you can have an automated bot to run polls, you can have automated bots, again, to book travel arrangements. There's a whole range of bots and if you so desire, you can look at customising, creating your own bot that you can then implement for your customers and potentially sell to others as well. So again, don't think the environment just stops with the Microsoft ecosystem, the integrations are there for third parties. Now, when we're talking about Teams, we're now talking about Teams being available across a spectrum inside a business. We're talking about working on a headset, a desk phone, working on a mobile device, again, using your uh, conference room phone to do that. We can set up uh, meeting rooms and we can integrate with large style collaboration devices. So example, the uh, Microsoft uh, Surface uh, Hub is a very good example of how that can be brought into a meeting, integrated together, so that everybody can see that whiteboard inside and outside the organisation. And again, there are some exciting things happening with Teams when it comes to meetings. So I don't know if you've seen, but it is now possible to have a person in a meeting uh, basically writing on a whiteboard and then that what they write on the whiteboard is viewable to all people because Teams is smart enough to basically uh, take that person out of the image while they're writing on the whiteboard so everybody can see. So there are exciting things, new developments happening to Teams. Teams is the forefront of Microsoft's development where they're putting a lot of resources and again, a lot of these fantastic features are also rolling out as we speak. Now, the most common question is where is where are the files stored when it comes to Teams? Well, the good news is that they are stored in SharePoint. So basically what Teams give you as a starting point is a nice, simplified, consistent uh, interface over something like SharePoint to put your files in. It allow you to organize them into channels, but when users graduate to requiring more power, more functionality um, in something like SharePoint, again, all they need to do is go into the files tab, select the open in SharePoint, and that will open up the SharePoint, the full SharePoint site that they can have access to. So it's important to remember that Teams, again, will create, will manage, will allow access to a SharePoint site for everybody who is a member of the team. Now, that's a great way to start getting people working on a project together, giving them the space to have conversations, giving them the space to, again, share files quickly and easily and for them to manage it as well. So remember that all the power of SharePoint, all the power of Exchange is underlying services like Teams. Now, when we do go into our uh, SharePoint team there, you'll see that we get a full SharePoint site, as I mentioned. So it has multiple document libraries, potentially. It has additional apps. It has uh, integration with Flow. It has the ability to sync and so on. So all of that, again, you get when you start using teams. As I mentioned, the automation with bots. So again, go into a team, have a look at the option to add an app. And in there, you'll see a 
range of different automation bots in there. And again, just put some in, put into a demo, have a play with it, see what it does. And then again, if you're a developer mindset, then maybe you can look at developing your own bot to do common things to uh, sell to your customers. Now, as mentioned, all of this is uh, basically sits on top of the enterprise grade security that comes with Office 365, all the, compli all the compliance, all the discovery, auditing, the device management, thanks to Microsoft 365 for our devices, multi-factor, uh, again, access is available and can be integrated quickly and easily um, as desired. So where do teams make sense? Well, teams make sense, again, inside an organization. Most organizations get teams pretty quickly when you show it to them, but the ones that I find that speak well to customers are typically things for the marketing department. The marketing department is a great place to start to, again, start getting people interested using these tools. And then you can uh, look at then adding on things like sales department, maybe customer support, maybe you can have one for the own, the own tech environment. So my recommendation generally is when you implement teams for uh, a company, you create an IT team and you basically give yourself guest access in there and you converse with the customer directly inside teams and everybody can see what's going on. You can share files, you can share videos, answer questions, do all that. So you find pretty quickly that teams will map to an organization's function. So typically admin, finance, HR, marketing, and so on make good candidates for a team to be created around them. Now, one of the most common asks by customers, this is great, but I need to work with people outside my organization. How do I do that? Well, team supports guest access. So again, basically what happens is it uses something called Azure Active Directory B2B, business to business collaboration, and you simply invite a user, any email address will work. They will basically then be sent an invitation, which they will then click through and that will then give them access to the team. Now that gives them access to everything that every other member inside your business has. It doesn't give them administrative rights, but it gives the ability to open, share, upload, chat, do all that sort of stuff. So it's a very, very good environment to allow customers to start sharing information quickly and easily with third parties. So a couple of examples I have is imagine a project manager working um, on a development or a building, they can have external architects, they can have external uh, electricians, maybe external, um, again, plumbers, and they can all, again, work in this environment, share files, put drawings, all of that, access it on their mobile device, chat, take photos, and do a whole range of things. Now, the great thing about that is the information that's created in these, um, these teams is then owned by the organization, and the control of that is also owned, and you can remove guest users if you so want to do it. The important thing here is, is that external guests come at no additional cost to the tenant. So again, you can invite external users into a team or outside your organization at no additional cost there. Now here's a table, you'll get the slides after to give you an idea of what a standard Teams user, so a standard Teams user is a user that has a Teams license inside the tenant, a guest user, is an Azure B2B account that you have invited into. So again, typically you see they can do uh, the collaboration component, but they can't do uh, some of the admin or the more advanced features. So again, they get pretty much uh, all the features you need to collaborate quickly and easily. Again, importantly, remember without the need for a license. So the approach here is to look at this product and to say, okay, what value can I lay around it? So what Microsoft is typically seeing these days is that the uh, revenue model or the business model around pure deployment, nothing else but rolling out services, enabling licenses is basically on the decline. Where the increase is coming from is from the adoption advisory. Okay, what's the best way to get this tool to work for your organization? What, uh, how many teams do we need? What should they be called? How many channels? Who needs rights? Again, what's the uh, option that you can help the customer get into this quickly and easily? and using best practice approaches. Now, importantly, as always, customers will change their mind when it comes to IT services. We need additional users. These users need to be removed. These we need to add. We need an additional team. What about this? How we do this? Can we create this? Okay, that's a managed service. That means that the customer is gonna to come to you looking for services, but around the enablement of Office 365 more than just the deployment. Yes, we've got all the products, but how do we use them? How can we continue to grow 
and take best advantage of that over a period of time. And you'll see that the greatest revenue opportunity is around business solutions. So what does that mean? So take a typical uh, situation or problem that a business has, and you can solve that using things like Teams, things like Flow for Automation, things like Power Apps to create front ends onto data. So think of a leave request, think of stationary orders, think of lots and lots of internal processes that you probably have and many other businesses have that can be packaged up, made generic, and then again, rolled into additional deployments. The advantage is, is once you've got a business solution, your software, then you can leverage that and resell that over and over and over again without making major changes. So the message here is, is that deployment, again, is probably on the decline when it comes to opportunity. And the idea here is adoption, uh, managing and enabling services, and also looking at building unique IP and solutions is where the value is going forward. So the opportunities here, and I would suggest the priorities are, is start off with making it a hub for people to start working. Give them the understanding of the new way of working. It's not files and folders, it's not the F drive. This is how we work. We work in a flat structure. We search things, we tag things, we pin things, we at mention people, we bring people into the conversation, we work in a different way. These are all the benefits, all right? So that is a requirement for training, architecting and so on. The next option, which we'll talk about obviously after my part, is the meetings and the calling. This is going to, again, solve a major problem for customers who are at their desk or on their mobile. Where do I make a call? I want to jump from one to the other. How do I do that quickly? How do we integrate with the phone system? So again, there's another great opportunity. Don't forget the mobile workforce, right? You've got people out there who probably never see a PC these days, who basically work off a mobile, tablet, phone these days, enabling them. How does it work? How do they get the most out of it? Put the apps on there environment and help them get connected. And then finally, moving to an intranet. So what's the way that we can start sharing information with people inside and outside our organization? What about common corporate information, company manuals? What about the news of the day? What about our competitors are doing? All of that builds the intelligence and the IP for the organization. There's something that can be quickly and easily rolled out by partners thanks to the SharePoint technology. Now, one of the most important things to consider here is that the revenue is where the products are or the common or the fastest growing application. And there is no doubt that Teams is Microsoft's focus and is also their fastest growing business app in history. So if you wanna be part of the opportunity here in businesses large and small, you really should be on Teams. You should be looking as that as the tip of the spear to go and show customers and get them into this new environment and enable the services that are typically coming with the suites that they're already buying. So aligning yourself with what Microsoft aligns, uh, with what Microsoft's direction here is, is gonna give you the biggest benefit as a partner. So again, we can start off on the left with just a monthly license. We just get standard margins and that's probably really on the decrease because it's become a commodity. We can do a one-time engagement. Okay, we can do an assessment, we can do a workshop, we can do maybe a, one, a once-off training, we can migrate their data, um, but that's a finite opportunity there. And again, there are limited margins. That becomes a commodity as that becomes automated away. We wanna start looking at how we can create recurring services. You know, what's the tech, what's the roadmap? What's happening in Teams? What's coming in Teams? What can we do in Teams or what's coming that's gonna be really new and exciting that we can roll out uh, to our customers and help enable their business and again, take them on the path, lead them in the direction because they won't know for sure. Again, how can we ensure that they get the best experience through their networking, through the management and monitoring of these tools? How many teams have been created? How much data is there? Who's doing what inside the team? Again. And we can also add in the ability to start managing calls in there as well. It's going to be a maintenance component. And again, there's going to be good margin in doing that. Now, the highest margin I would suggest to you is around creating this uh, IP, the intellectual property you create around automating tools. So what's an automated process you can bring to a customer that you can then resell or repurpose and sell to another customer, right? So again, what's the leverage you can look at using the tools that are in there? So again, things like Flow, Power Apps, Power BI, all of those things represent, represent great opportunity to create repeatable IP based on the extent of the businesses that the resellers deal with. What about this training? Again, training is not a once off. Teams adds new features all the time. SharePoint adds features all the new time. How about going back in and 
giving customers regular training or scheduling regular updates with the management to show them what's possible and get their ideas flowing, uh, get them to say, look, we really want to do this. Um, can you help us do that? So again, you need to show this, demonstrate this on a regular basis. Talked about the bit with bots. If you want to get a bit into the development side, the dev side, you can start using software, uh, things like Azure Functions as well to create uh, bots and start automating process. And don't forget, what about integrating uh, existing line of business? How does Xero integrate this? QuickBooks, how does this work? If you become an expert on that, you're probably going to get a lot of referrals because people are going to say, well, I want to integrate these products into my Microsoft Teams. And finally, we've got the ability again to do the reporting, who's using it and how many people are sending messages, how are they actually using Teams and helping customers optimize uh, for that environment. So my takeaways for you before I hand it off are that Microsoft Teams is a different way of collaborating. It's not files and folders, it's not an F drive, it's not basically sharing an attachment via an email and hoping that somebody gets back to you. All right, again, it's a different way of working, a different way of thinking. And again, that's an opportunity to go to customers and create a framework that you can take to them and say, look, this is the best way to implement this to get these benefits. The idea here is Teams is going to allow users to create the spaces themselves to do work. They don't necessarily require IT to get involved, but they're still going to need it for training, enablement, management, um, and again, maintenance down the track. So this helps users get their job done quickly, but still going to require maintenance from an IT provider. You'll have to give them governance and guidance. What's a good naming convention? What should teams be called? When do you make a team? When do you make a channel? You know, when do you not make a team? All of this is guidance that can be provided by IT resellers based on their experience with many, many customers. And the key thing I would suggest, you can't simply lift and shift a file server environment, an F drive into Teams. It's just going to be a poor experience for everybody, the IT provider and the customer. It needs to be re-architected. And this is a fee, this is an opportunity to go to customers and provide that. Say, look, this is the way to get the best out of this new environment, we have to change. And that's been the case from moving from standalone PCs to file servers to everything. We have to think about the new way of doing this. Here's an opportunity to clean up files, to restructure, to get things the way that we want in this new environment. Now, as I mentioned, Teams is being widely adopted. Customers are uh, basically taking up, enterprises are taking up. This is a great opportunity to jump on there and ride the coattails of this product as it continues to uh, rapidly uh, be adopted. And again, the idea here is don't be don't do something that everybody else is doing. Don't just do uh, migration, do something else. Add the extra value. What's the value? What extra value do you bring to Teams that is unique to you that nobody else does? That's what customers are gonna pay for. So I have a few resources there for you, a couple of um, videos and so on to jump in and have a look. The most important one I'd recommend you take a look at is success with Teams. The bottom one there, start with there if you haven't looked at Teams, but get into it, start using it inside your own business and look at the opportunity. And I think with that, I will now hand over to Switch Connect, who will show you the opportunities around integrating voice into Teams. Thanks, Robert. Uh, great insight, uh, especially about Teams, it's, it's really, it's really the thing is it needs to be adopted as the whole business start to, to really see success. Now I'm going to try and drive from two laptops and put the power of technology to the test. Uh, see if I can click through. Um, so the bit I want to cover off is, is looking at the team's calling component and, and looking at the journey in where we've come from in uh, calling and collaboration over the years and then go through some of our the telecommunications industry loves to abbreviate everything. So um, I put a bit of a slide he through here. Um, it's very, very hard to find um, AU marketplace um, statistics. Um, we will have another webinar out uh, in a couple of weeks with some stuff that Ribbon Communications has specifically done on the UC market in, in Australia. Uh, but this is one specifically for this year uh, and looking at where does the teamwork collaboration apps fit into our traditional hosted uh, uh, telephony marketplace. So when we look at Teamworks, we're, we're looking at uh, specifically Microsoft Teams uh, and, and looking at all apps like that. 
Um, as we work down the value stack, um, we look into our traditional voice services. So if we start at the bottom, when we see CC as a service, everything's as a service in voice lane now. So this is call center and contact center as a service. UC as a service is what most people will be familiar with. So this is looking at all your hosted telephony, SIP trunking, basically pretty much all your VoIP providers sit in as this UC as a service stack. Voice as a service, VAS is looking at all your video as a service. So looking at your life size, your Polycom video conferencing, Blue Jeans, um, Starleaf, your WebEx, all those sorts of applications. And then you've got CP as a service is communication platform as a service. This is when you're looking at a fully integrated um, view. So uh, where businesses are building uh, like iOS and Android apps, fully integration, integrating the communications apps. So you can do click to call in those apps. Uh, it's looking at the API layer on top of all this. So the, the thing to, to really look at is, as we can see, is the fastest growing growth area is in that team uh, collaboration stack. And what's really driving that is at the moment, everyone has a different app to do all this. But really, as you move to a Microsoft Teams uh, and a collaboration approach, is you're actually taking in your video as a service, your UCAS offering all into that Microsoft Teams. So what we're seeing is, is that when we're talking, where Robert was talking about the shadow IT before, is every uh, person within a business has a license for everything. So, so what we're saying is businesses has their Office 365 subscription per user, then they'll have a subscription for WebEx calling, and then they'll have a soft phone through the, the, the UCAS provider. So they end up paying $30 here, $30 here, $30 here, $30 here, $30 here when we're listed with your Microsoft Teams, so it's already included in their Office 365 license. So it's actually uh, expanding the capability, but actually bringing that down to a single pane of glass to, to actually manage and collaborate across the business. Other than having to go, oh, if I want to run a WebEx with a, or an external webinar with a client, I've got to go click over on this app. And there's no visibility and, and trackability to see that uh, across the whole business. So that's really where Microsoft Teams gets in and, and why we're really seeing that drive of that collaboration. And a lot of that is coming down through A, the, the modern workplace, but also the mobile workforce. Uh, everyone's becoming more and more mobile these days as businesses grow globally and, and, in, and international and even domestically we're seeing that it's growing to a, a more mobile workforce now. Um, so what's the opportunity? We really see the march to cloud is unstoppable now. Um, everyone is looking to do that. Uh, over the last few years, we've seen uh, everywhere from the SME right up to enterprises moving to the cloud, whether that's public cloud, private cloud, software as a service providers, we're looking at services migrating to Azure, Amazon, Google Cloud, IBM Cloud, all those sorts of services, moving all those on-premise servers out of the office and into the cloud to deliver uh, the security and, and the scalability and reliability the business that needs. And the voice today has kind of been that little black box that sits in the back that everyone goes, oh, once we move everything else to the cloud, we'll deal with that voice. Uh, and now we're really seeing that we're at that turning point now and in the Australian market, with the copper cutoff now, now being announced as of the 30th of last month, the official cutoff time for ICM has started to roll out. And I think in the last week, I've seen 10 or 12 of, of our partners come to us that have, have got the letters from, from their customers about the, the ICM cutoffs coming. We're in a revolutionary time in our market where within the voice market is a customer has to make a decision to do something with their telephony now. Because if they don't, the phone will stop ringing. Um, so if they're still on base copper services, there's going to come a day where they're going to come into the office on 9 a.m. one morning and the phone won't be working. So it's that revolutionary time to, to, to work with your customers to actually take them through that, that transformation journey. So it's a way to go out and win new customers. Uh, we all know it's easier to sell additional services to an existing customer than find new customers. And it's a way to secure extra revenue streams where, where you currently haven't been able to drive them before. PC. Um, where do we see Microsoft Teams and cloud calling fits in? It really fits in in every spate of that market. Uh, we've got some partners that sell Teams calling to single, single uh, one-man band businesses that want to be able to communicate and collaborate, have access to all their data and, and communicate with their customers all, all from one app, whether it's on their iPhone, tablet or laptop, wherever they track. 
right down to we've got other partners who deal in the large enterprise and government space where we're talking over a thousand seats where they're trying to look at better ways to communicate and, and collaborate and and stop the, the the sprawl of data through, through throughout the business and actually becoming a, a more productive and uh, to their business um, what's really driving this is the digital transformation journey every business we see today is looking at how can they do business better uh, with the same resources but target more customers uh, drive more engagement with their customers drive more empowerment within their employees to be able to do their job whenever whenever they need to do it and this comes back to what Robert was going on about is that the drive of the technology and the control of that is coming down away from the IT administration down to the user. It's getting now to, as we live in a, a consumer-based society and go, when I want it, I want it now. And I need access to something and I want it now because I need it to do my job. So it's really coming down and empowering the employee to give them the tools they need to do their job and to do it as quickly as possible. From a business perspective, it's all about optimising those operations. How do we digitalise our, our operations and how do we streamline it and automate where possible? So this is where you start to look at your integration around Power BI, OneDrive, all the other Microsoft uh, suites to plug in, Microsoft Flow around or, or automation, plugging all those backend tools in to, to really streamline the, the business. And then how do we transform the products and services that we're delivering to our customer. This is really where the digital transformation kicks in. And this is where teams can really come in and, and really help, help customers grow. Um, and obviously the thing that always comes up is, I've rolled out teams in the business. It's a fantastic collaboration is how do I make that my phone? I, how do I take that next step? So some of the, the, the key sales triggers in which we see is really driving around that teams calling uh, discussion is, is they're moving to the cloud, they've got a legacy old phone system, PBX is another term we, we use in, in the industry, uh, commonly you, you used uh, to, to represent phone systems is we're in a position in the market now where I've got this box, it's been bolted on, on the wall for 20 years, it's not really delivering what I want, it's only got physical desktop handsets, but I want mobile soft clients, I want my, my, my staff to be able to take that call anywhere, how do I do that? So that's really when it comes into replacing that phone system. That also is coming down in, as the copper networks cut off, a lot of these old systems can't handle IP-based communications or only copper-based services. So it's that time to replace. The other thing is where customers are now moving offices, merging, uh, acquiring other businesses uh, and growing their business by mergers and, and acquisitions transitioning to teams becomes a fantastic way to merge the, those entities together and to get onto a one communication platform. Uh, as we said, kind of in point one is that mobile workforce. Uh, driving down into four is how can we communicate with our clients better? People just don't want to have audio calls now. They want click uh, sing, uh, single click escalation to video calls. So being able to make Federated teams to teams calls to, to, to your customers is a great way we see uh, businesses is driving that customer contact and delivering rich real-time real contact to, to, to their customers, integrating communications in, into other applications. So within your, your teams is linking in your social media feeds and, and all your other marketing and, and collaboration tools that it all comes in, in into one pool that can be managed by, by your team. And then a lot of it is if you've got a multi-site and, and a larger business, they'll have a, a mixed fleet of, of phone systems going around all different businesses, uh, all different sites where have different phone systems. So from a HR perspective, getting to a single platform across the business that everyone's working off that same platform. So whenever staff walk into different offices, they can all communicate and, and collaborate. And as we said, what the, the biggest driver we're really seeing this is, is with the ISDN cutoff. So as of 30th of, of this year, the cutoff has started. Uh, we've already seen services turned off as, as, as part of that cutoff and that will roll through over the next 18 months. Uh, so now's the time to be talking to your customer. If you haven't already had that conversation, now's the time to be talking to, to your customers about that. Um, what are the major benefits as people look to go, how do I sell? What, what's the benefit of teams calling to, to, to our customers? Um, so interesting one around is we go, it's a lower, lower total cost of ownership. And many people 
Uh, many of our partners argue this point with us because of in going to teams, you've got to have a, an enterprise series Microsoft license. You might only be selling business premium, so there's an extra cost there. But if you look at the total cost of ownership and how you calculate that, if you look at what the original phone system costs, what are you paying for ad moves and change? Every time you want to program a button on, on a phone, you have to um, call out the phone system guys to come and come and do that. And that's charging you $150 a time every time they come out. If you actually sit down and work out those costs, being that teams can all be now managed through through a central single plane of glass management, the, the, the teams at admin portal, 365 admin portal, you're actually totally reducing that total cost of ownership. And actually implementing teams is driving productivity within the business is you're actually saving time from a staff's perspective in, 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 in doing their everyday job. So that's driving savings to the customer's bottom line. The other one is obviously working anywhere, improve productivity. I can now make uh, transfer company-wide calls, take calls from, from the office main numbers, call queues and, and call flow on whether that's the client on my mobile phone, the desktop or, or ha however that works. Um, enabling that collaboration both internally and externally um, so that I can now single make team for team calls, like I can call Robert uh, on Teams and then we can automatically escalate that to a video call, a screen share, a chat, a whiteboard um, and all that can be recorded and send the link out. It can fully transcode that, take all my meeting minutes for me afterwards. We're just really driving that, that, that collaboration experience. Um, integrations of applications, we can now integrate this fully to all our other third party looking at integrating bots, Microsoft Flow to streamline in, in how we, we, we run our business. And then the biggest one is, is disaster recovery. Because it's in the cloud, now is if the cop, if the internet gets chopped off at the office, there's a lot of construction going on, a backhoe goes through the cable to, to the office, my phone will still work, everyone's got 4G on their mobile, I, I can now continually take take those phone calls where, where, wherever I am now. So I've got that, that collaboration space where, wherever I am globally. Um, as we look at um, actually working with our customers and, and how to monetize this and, and how to sell this to customers is we actually have different buying personas. So as you sell to different people within your customers, there's different objectives that they're looking. So uh, these are the four main ones that we see. So obviously you have the executive uh, or business owners. So this is more in, in like your, your SMB type business where the owner of the business ma ma makes all th those decisions. We then have the financial bias. This is when you're selling to probably your, your mid to larger businesses where you're selling to a CFO um, or finance manager. You've then got the user bias. So this is normally where Teams gets adopted by. It comes from, from the bottom up. So the users find Teams on their PC, they start collaborating with it, they see how value and then they bring it up to the management team and go, hey, we should be rolling this out. So from a user perspective, what are they looking? And then from the technical buyer, this is when you're selling to your, your, your IT departments and things like that, when, when they're looking at what those concerns are. So there's different personas and there's different things to be in what they're looking to drive those efficiencies uh, and, and drive those benefits to Microsoft Teams. So some of them will be the same through businesses, but it is uh, good to understand those different personas and know how to have that conversation because having a technical conversation around how great um, the architecture behind Microsoft Teams, when you're talking to a business owner or a finance person, they don't probably really care about that. They want to know what the end user experience is and what the bottom line cost savings to the business are. So in, in understanding those uh, personas of who you're selling to will really help you in growing that business. Um, a couple of, just waiting for the slides to catch up. Uh, a couple of uh, qualifying questions. If we're seeing a, a, a lot of partners now want to start selling voice, but if you're not a traditional voice partner, the age old rules apply. You don't know what you don't know. So at Switch Connect, we're here to, to help uh, grow your team, educate your team on knowing the, the pitfalls in, in, in selling voice to a customer. So as we've been doing this for for, for, for over 15 years now, we understand in how to understand what the customer wants and then how to deliver that as a solution. So we've got a couple of questions here as uh, just some thought provocative things as you're having your, your weekly or fortnightly or, or monthly catch up with customers. 
couple of questions to ask him. Um, and it's more about moving away from talking about technology to talking about business and business process and understanding how how a business operates and how you can help a business streamline their business processes. And when we look across all our partners who are doing well, is it's you've got to transition now from selling technology to selling business solutions and being able to understand how business operates, what their business requirements are, and then being able to tailor the technology to that, but look at it from the business owner's perspectives of what the end user experience is and, and how to drive that for their business. Um, so what is Teams Calling? Uh, so the simplest way to think of Teams Calling is it is connecting the, the, the public phone network, so the PSDN network, to your customers and Microsoft 365 tenant. Um, so at, at Switch Connect, we are uh, one of the leading providers in, in Australia of delivering this service. Um, coming from our heritage in voice as well, is we've developed a whole lot of enhanced capabilities um, to overlay to that native Teams functionality to deliver the features and functions that your customer needs, uh, depending on what their business is. So this range for, ranges from advanced call flow requirements around auto attendance, supporting legacy analog adopt, adapters. So this is big in healthcare and education and warehousing type customers. They may have like in-roof um, paging adapters, the big horns and things like that. Uh, we've got capabilities to support that on Microsoft Teams. Also looking at uh, core recording, enhanced core routing, fax services, and we have a, a number of cool new announcements coming out next week around analytics and, and reporting as uh, that still doesn't exist within the Microsoft uh, framework yet. Uh, we have some cool new offerings so that you can start to visualize uh, that data for, for your customers in looking at um, dashboarding in how many calls you're taking, how long they're lasting and things like that. Um, where does it all fit into the Office 365 stack? So with all your Office 365 licenses now, you get the Microsoft Teams license from a collaboration point of view. Uh, this necessarily doesn't include the phone system and PSDN calling. So in order to roll out phone system, you do need to have an E-Series license. So whether that's E-Series 1, 3 or 5, uh, you need to have one of those licenses uh, to, to activate the phone system. Uh, the phone system license is an optional bolt-on license. So if you've got an E-Series 1 or 3 license, you do need to buy the optional uh, phone system license to bundle into them. If you have an E5 series license, it automatically comes with the phone system license. Um, and you also get the optional audio conference license. So what the audio conference license is, is similar, you've probably joined a webinar before and it's got an external dial-in number where you dial in, enter the meeting ID, you can be joined in just by audio only. So this is Microsoft's version of that. It is a really, really one of the best integrations we've seen from an audio conferencing system. You can literally go from a point-to-point -point call with a click of a button, automatically escalate that to a full audio conference and have up to 200 external parties dialed into it. So it's a very, very nice integration, single clip escalation. So on an E1 or 3, that's an optional bolt-on license as well. Um, and an E5 includes phone system and audio cut audio conferencing built in. On top of that, so that's from the Microsoft licensing perspective, you then need a calling plan option from Switch Connect to in order to connect you to that phone system. That calling plan allows you to migrate your existing numbers from, from, from your current provider to, to map in, so you don't need to, to change your numbers moving forward. What we look at is how do you drive a revenue stream out of this? Where does that revenue, revenue stream come from? So obviously, I've got my base licensing, so being a, an Ingram Micro CSB partner, you'll be buying your Office 365 licensing, so you're making uh, monthly recurring revenue from that. I'm then bolting on the uh, Microsoft Teams phone system license, so I'm making some extra 365 revenue there. I'm then bolting on my audio conferencing and conferencing requirements, if that's what the customers are, so I'm making some extra margin there. The next part comes to, obviously, you bolt in the, the Switch Connect Teams calling, there's a recurring revenue, uh, monthly recurring revenue uh, stream built from that, as well as with Ingram Micro now, you can buy your full MBN and data services by Switch Connect and generate uh, recurring revenue from that. Um, we then move into, as Robert was addressing before, 
is the 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 upfront, the implementation, the enablement training. This is the biggest part of what we see in Teams rollout. Is 70% of a, a Teams rollout now is all about enablement. Is working with the business to understand how best to use team, Teams. Teams has built has been such a flexible platform in so many different ways to use it, but understanding like Robert was going, when to create a team, when to use a channel, how's the best way to do that, how to move from a linear file structure to a more SharePoint team-based structure. So all that comes into consultancy and also enablement in how to drop business. Obviously, there's still a hardware requirement, whether that's desktop phones, uh, video conferencing units, um, audio conferencing units for meeting rooms, as well as headsets. Uh, we are seeing now with a Teams rollout that 80% of uh, Teams rollout is going to headsets now rather than, than desk phones as everyone's becoming that mobile, mobile workforce, but there's still a need to drive that. And then obviously the fifth revenue stream is then to wrap a whole managed service around that as part of your managed services to the customer to support and constantly evolve that solution for, for the customer. Um, as we look at Teams calling at Switch Connect, we've kind of built two models uh, for you to take to your customers. There's the traditional per user model, where for every Teams user, you have a calling plan. This is really great in kind of your sub 15 user, 10 to 15 user type sites. But we have also bought, which is the most popular way to deliver team calling now, is a per channel model, where you have a number of, of shared um, PSDN channels, so concurrent calls that you can share across any number of team users. This really works in, in once you're over about 15 users, this really works a lot more cost effective for, for your customers moving forward. But feel free to, to reach out to the Switch Connect team. We're more than happy to step you through and, and help you understand the, the differences uh, between this. Um, one of the cool things we have built for, for Ingrid Micro uh, and their partners is a proof of concept product. Uh, Microsoft Teams is, is, is a new evolution uh, within the business and everyone wants to touch and feel it connected to their tenancy. So we have built a proof of concept product where you can sell it to your customers and we'll actually spin up Teams calling uh, with two channels to your customer as well as some uh, direct in dial numbers so they can actually connect it to a couple of key staff within the business and really see how well that works for their business. One of the best ways to get this into a business, which we see is all around meeting rooms. Everyone's trying to streamline in how they, they, they do their meeting rooms. So we find a lot of customers is that's where the team's calling uh, journey starts is within the meeting room and then evolves to, to the rest of the business. And really the proof of concept um, product is is the best way we've seen partners go to market and we will say that in partners we've seen that roll this out is we have a hundred percent closure rate with partners who sell a proof of concept to customers a hundred percent of them have closed that customer on teams call so it is a great way to demonstrate it get involved with your customer and start that journey in in taking them along that digital tra transformation journey um, Around hardware, we, we, we did cover off uh, before. There's a number of hardware options as, as, as you look for customers. So Yalink has, has a bunch of hardware. So does Polycom around your audio conferencing, your huddle rooms, and then your, your larger video meeting rooms. Um, so there are hardware options as well. So that's all for me. I think we're moving into a Q&A session, I believe. Yeah. So if you have any questions, please uh, put your questions in the chat box and we'll answer them as they come through. I'll just give it a minute. So I've got one and he's asking, is it easy to port existing numbers across? Uh, it, it is. So it's the same as it's the same process as you've normally got from migrating um, service provider to service provider. Um, so SwitchNet, we handle that whole process for you um, and we'll step you through the there's a few different ways to, to migrate those services. Um, 
It's just a matter of uh, how quickly that, that, that needs to happen. We will say that if you are looking at working with your customer and migrate across, is getting that uh, porting request in is sooner rather than later. As with the ISDN cutoff coming off, um, there's a lot of porting happening uh, across the network and uh, the sooner you get it in, the faster that process is. Great. Um, and the next question is, Teams calling in Microsoft 365 Business, is this likely to happen? Um, I don't know if you've got a view on this, Robert, um, if you've heard anything. So my, my understanding on this is today, right here, right now, no, it's not licensed because it's a business plan. Uh, my understanding is is that Microsoft will announce the ability to do it in Microsoft 365 Business in a time in the future. Uh, again, I would suggest to you that that time in the future probably is going to be before the end of the year. That's purely speculation on my part. And I would suggest to you to keep your ears peeled to Microsoft uh, Ignite, which is in uh, early November for um, maybe an announcement around then. So that's basically as much as I know. But at this stage right here, right now, no, it is not licensed. Uh, but the feeling is and the understanding is that it is coming and will change in a short period of time. Yeah, the, the latest update I had from the head of the team's global product to I was talking to last night is it is expected before the end of the year. But as Robert said, I'd keep your eye out. There's a bunch of Microsoft conferences coming up. Uh, I'd keep your eyes and ears peed to the Twitter feeds from them because um, I think you'll find there's a lot of cool new announcements around Microsoft Teams as Teams is the biggest R&D project for Microsoft currently. So the amount of R&D and development being done on it is, is the biggest investment currently. So um, watch this space as it's changing weekly. Okay. And I've got a question that says core recording. Is that... So core recording is an interesting one. So natively within Teams, if you've scheduled a meeting, so whether that's a point to point team meeting, if you scheduled a meeting, it can be recorded and it automatically integrates um, up into to, to Microsoft Teams. If you are using an audio conference bridge as well, you can record those calls. If it's a one-to-one -one call in Microsoft Teams, you currently can't record them. Um, it is coming, the feature is on the roadmap, but it's not here today. So, and then that also extends to PSDN calls. Um, there's no PSDN call recording yet. So at Switch Connect, we do have a solution for that um, as, as one of our our enhanced capabilities, we can deliver that core recording, but it's not native yet. Um, a couple more. Which telco can we use? Which telco? Uh, so which telco? So currently, with our Teams calling option, is Switch Connect delivers that carriage for you. Um, in the enterprise space, we do have an enterprise-based product where your customers can bring their own carriage. But uh, there are there are some some requirements around that. Please feel free to reach out to the Switch Connect team, and, and we can step you through that. But as it stands today, the carriage is actually delivered by, by Switch Connect, so your customer would need to migrate their voice services to Switch Connect to to, to deliver the team calling. I think I've got one more left. Uh, is there going to be a free trial option available? Not from within the um, anytime soon within the team's calling. The issue is there is quite a bit of work that goes in and there is actually a physical hard cost and being the fact that we cover the calling cost and everything like that. So uh, I don't believe we'll bring out a free trial option anytime, but within the market, as far as I'm aware, we are the only provider that actually even delivers a trial or, or, or a proof of concept product. So, um, so yeah, but I, I don't believe that will change anytime soon, uh, but uh, definitely re reach out to us. Uh, and, and we can ha ha have a chat around what your requirements are. Yeah, um, and what are the monthly costs per user for the add-on to an E1, E3 license? Oh, now you're going to be quite Microsoft licensing. Um, the phone system bolt-on is, depending on what pricing plan or whatever you want, I believe the R suggested rate, like the normal Microsoft, is about, a, I'm going to say $12. I think it's like $11.60. And the audio conference bolt-on is, I believe, six dollars. Um, they are the two costs. That's the RRP, not what your CSP pricing is, depending on whatever your 
plan or, or partnership status with Microsoft is, but I believe it's 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 about twelve dollars for the phone system bolt on and six dollars for the audio conferencing. Okay, so I've got one more, I think, um, and then we kind of wrap up. So when can we have the Tiffany PBX option available in Australia? What's the second half of that question? Uh, so yeah, so so the so, so, so that's what we're, we're talking around phone system. Is that telephony feature set? So it is available in, in Australia for Australian tenants, um, but you do need a, a partner like Spritzkinet or 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 a, a direct routing partner to deliver those voice services for you. But they are available in in Australia. Some of the functionality is hosted out of Singapore um, currently, but um, a lot of those infrastructure is being migrated to Australia by the end of the year. Do we have time for one more? Yeah. Yeah, okay. With the POC, is it easy to revert back to the client? Yeah, so, so, with, so with the proof of concept, we actually um, provision them numbers, um, test numbers off our platform. So in essence, they're not actually migrating in any of their existing services. Normally they just call forward their number across to test it. So in essence, to fail back, it's it's super simple. But um, definitely reach out to the Switch Connect team and we can and, and step you through the, the, the proof of concept process. I think that's all the questions we've got through. Uh, but we'll definitely be sending a copy of the webinar, uh, the slide deck webinar recording and contact details for both yourselves and some useful resources around what we discussed today. Cool. So thank you, Ryan. Thank you. No problems.